Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Hey, before we get started, you know the routine. Go ahead and hit the subscription button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Now, this is something that came across my radar yesterday. And it was kind of shocking, but things happen in life, right? We all are susceptible to uh, things like divorce, breakup. And so this video here is about Melinda and Bill Gates, or Bill and Melinda Gates, and their announcement that they will be divorcing. So they gave uh, joint statements on uh, their respective Twitter accounts and uh, announced that they would be <clears throat> divorcing. And the reason given uh, wasn't in depth, but basically it stated that they had uh, come to the conclusion that they didn't believe they could continue growing together. Now that's that's really loaded. That's a, that's a loaded uh, statement, a loaded uh, proclamation to say you feel like you can't grow anymore. Uh, that happens. But there's a lot we can learn from this. And I want to attack this from, from different angles. And like I do, tell a personal story. Now, Bill Gates, we all know Bill Gates. Uh, many of us probably know that he's married, but probably didn't know his wife's name. Uh, unless you're into that kind of thing or a really techie guy, right? So I've been in the tech industry for over 20 years. I'm Microsoft certified in, in a few certs, a few disciplines. Um, so I know, you know, I know a lot about Bill Gates. I've gone to different seminars to hear him speak in person. So that was just the life I was in early on in the tech business. Uh, now I'm more so on the business side of, of tech. So I don't go to those seminars anymore. Uh, so, you know, that's a little history on me. But what we know about Bill Gates, one of the wealthiest men uh, on the planet Earth in the world. Uh, his reports are saying he's worth around $125 billion or $127 billion, something like that. And uh, he's done a lot. He has the uh, Bill and Melinda uh, Foundation. Those is world renowned. Uh, it's a private, private foundation. Uh, I believe it's the largest uh, foundation as of 2015. The largest private foundation as of 2015. So they do a lot. They do a lot of work. Some may argue um, the work they're doing is is not good. They're interfering interfering in the lives of. Uh, citizens uh, uh, are too involved uh, in saying what goes and what doesn't go uh, in the lives of the people. Some may say they're doing a great job with the foundation, but this is not what this is about. I'm just laying the groundwork about Bill Gates, what he's done, what his wife has done. Now, we can learn a lot from this man because I'm going to hit this from different angles. Now, for a man that is worth several, several hundreds, you know, well, 125 billion, allegedly, uh, this man has accomplished a lot. He co-founded and created Microsoft in 75. Uh, he's done a lot. And um, he's accomplished a lot. So for this man to say, uh, or for them to say, we don't feel like we can continue to grow. Wow, that's pretty powerful. And that lets you know that, man, don't, don't put all your worth and your energy into money, into material things, because it's just a resource. It's a powerful resource, and it's a resource uh, I personally think you should have and have plenty of it. Uh, but it's just a resource and the main purpose on this earth is to pursue your purpose 
what are you here for? I gotta know what you're here for. What are you supposed to be doing? You, you, not, I'm, I'm worried about what I'm supposed to be doing. You gotta focus on what you're supposed to be doing. All of us have gifts, talents, and unique talents, and uh, we gotta hone those talents and gifts. Uh, you know, and uh, share those gifts with the world. And so that's how I read into it that Bill and Melinda maybe want to go to a different level, another level, and they don't feel like they can do that together. They might feel like they've reached their peak as a couple and they need to do their own thing. Now, um, Another lesson that could be learned, and that's okay, fellas, if, you, if you're if in a relationship for a while and you believe you reached your peak as a couple, uh, but there's more you can do. And I'm talking about more uh, in a sense of righteousness, not ego or selfishness, not because you, you want to, you know, tap more chicks or, you know... Uh, uh, you you want to you wanna go back to your, to your clubbing days. Or, I'm not talking about that. That's that that's immature, right? I'm talking about you feel like there's more you can do in pursuing your purpose, more you can get out of you before you die, and you don't feel like you guys are on the same board. And, hey, it's okay. It's okay to split. And so what's interesting Bill and Melinda could have took the route of, hey, we want divorce because we don't want the publicity. We don't want our public persona to be uh, tainted. So why don't you stay in that estate and I'll stay in this estate and we'll keep it moving. But they didn't want that. Uh, and I respect that. So uh, that's their choice. But just being objective, of course, I don't, I'm not, I don't know them. I'm not in their relationship. I don't have ties to their relationship. But just being objective, we can all relate to something in this. That's one thing. It's okay to not start over. It is okay to start over. But in this case, it's okay to disconnect and pursue your purpose. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh, she doesn't own him. He doesn't own her. Uh, sometimes we... Uh, only together for a season. That may be a long season. It may be a short season. It's okay. So that's why you have to, have to always stay balanced uh, and, and, and don't get so emotional into where you feel like you own someone because you don't own them, fellas. Uh, things happen. People grow apart. People have diff different aspirations. It's okay to disconnect. As long as is done for righteous reasons. I ain't got no issue with it. So another angle to this is Bill did not get married until he was 38. Now, he had already started Microsoft years before. You know, years prior, he had started Microsoft with Paul Allen. And I uh, believe there was one more gentleman, but he and Paul Allen were, were the main players in that. Um, so when he got married, he already had his stuff together. Already. He focused on honing his gifts and talents. He was a serial thinker at that point. A serial thinker. His focus was on, his focus was on getting his talents and gifts out of him and creating before he attached to any woman. Now, I'm not saying he didn't date. I'm not saying he didn't have sex. It wouldn't surprise me if he didn't know. Uh, but before he attached himself, before he had kids, before he got married, he already had his stuff together. Already. So you got to think about that, man. Look how much he had accomplished before he got married. So he got married at 38, man. Man, I first got married at 20, man. 
I hadn't accomplished anything because I was thinking ass backwards. Not only did I not have proper leadership, but you can't, I can't just blame that. I made those choices. I made those decisions. But now, you know, I know better. It's my obligation to not force feed you, but just to put the information out there. Who wants to listen? Listen. Who wants to embrace it? Embrace it. But this should be a lesson to all of us. This man had his stuff together before he attached himself to any woman, before he had any kids. So he got married at 38. Microsoft had been created. And he was a billionaire already. Already. They met at, at a fair, at a technical fair. And uh, yeah, she was educated, but of course she didn't have as much as, as Bill. And so he elevated her. And I'm going to segue into something, piggybacking off of him, him elevating her in a second. So he elevated her. She was a respectable woman uh, on paper. Uh, I don't know her personally, of course. And so uh, they started dating, got married, and uh, yeah, had three kids in, in, the, in the process. She is a former general manager at Microsoft. Again, he elevated her. She didn't elevate him. He already had his stuff together. Remind you of anyone? Huh? Adam and Eve. Adam already had his stuff together. He was already walking with God, getting his stuff together. Eve stepped into a situation that was already set. Now, we know the rest of that story. Adam started simping, lost focus, and we know the rest. But he had his stuff together before Eve came into the picture. And I would suggest to all men do that. Don't make the mistakes I made at a young age. Don't make the mistakes a lot of men made at a young age before you attach yourself to a woman like that, before you impregnate her, before you give her attention like that. Any woman, focus on you. Focus on honing your gifts and talents. Focus on creating. Because then you have more energy, more time to share with someone else. You can start living a par parallel life instead of being so serial and focused on one thing. You could, you know, uh, I don't want to get into this too deep, but you know, the left side of the brain, that, that's your intellectual intelligence. Uh, that's serial, serial energy. Uh, the right side is emotional intelligence, parallel, right? So when I'm focused on something, creating, I have to focus on that. That's serial energy, ser serial path. I can't focus on this. I really focus on this using my left brain, right? My intellectual intelligence. And also love you the way I'm supposed to love you, right? So one, one's going to take a hit. So I would suggest you guys focus on your gifts and talents. Get settled. Get in a good position. And then pull some energy away from that to where you want to, you know, give a woman some energy, start a family possibly, but have your stuff together first. Now, going back to, he elevated her. He elevated her and as he should have. And she brought uh, a lot to the table. Uh, I looked at a documentary on Bill Gates about two or three years ago. And According to the, what he says and what his family says, Melinda is a bright woman, a wise woman. And she's one of the few people that would challenge him. And I think I made a video on that before, how a woman should challenge you, sharpen you somewhat, not out of bitterness, not out of uh, spite, not out of uh, uh, just being a pest, but it's, it's natural for a woman to challenge you. Now, it does come a point where she ought to chill, chill out, and let you focus on creating. Because uh, the challenges are, are testing you, sharpen you. But there is a point where you're like, hey, we passed the testing stage. We got to actually create and go into the production stage. So enough is enough at some point. But... He's, she's one of the few people Bill listened to that he really respected. And she had a lot of ways like his mom. His mom was like that too. His mom was very smart. Look, look up uh, Bill Gates' mom and 
And uh, I don't know the doc name of the documentary, but it's very informative, very good documentary. And hey man, Bill Gates' mom was was uh, something, a force. His dad was a force too, but his mom was a force also. His dad died uh, pretty young, and uh, you know he was raised by his mom most of his life, and so his mom was a force, man, in the community and uh, nationwide eventually. And so Melinda reminded Bill a lot of his mom. And so that's a lesson within itself too, man. Your mom has to be a respectable person. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of who you should want to marry, your mom, only if she's a respectable woman. Some women, some moms are not, and you shouldn't be trying to marry your mom. Uh, but in this case, you know, his mom even said, hey, she's the one. His sister said she's the one. Because Bill is very stubborn, according to the documentary I, I, I looked at. Very stubborn, headstrong, and uh, yeah, man, he would bump heads with his dad, bump heads with his mom, and uh, he bumped heads with Melinda also, but she didn't back down, and so he respected that. And so that's a lesson within itself. Get a woman you can respect. Get a woman that has a, a sober mind and that can give you some good counsel when you run into walls and can balance you out. So that's a lesson within itself. Now, th this next perspective I want to give is, you know, say I would come back to he elevated her. I want to tag that to a personal story also. So, men, uh, and I'm talking to a certain type of man. Men, when you elevate your woman, and uh, and she may be at a, a respectable level, level spiritually, emotionally, into uh, intellectually. She may be at a respectable level, but you may uh, be at another level, right? She's at a respectable level, but you're at another level. So you're giving her the game, man. You're giving her what you know, your nuggets of wisdom and knowledge. You're giving it to her. You're transferring a lot of that to her, teaching her, guiding her. So you're speaking to her a certain way so she can digest it because she may not quite be there yet. So you're giving it to her uh, in baby doses, right? You're not giving it a whole food. You're giving it to her in baby doses. And so you got to be cognizant of her growth. You have to be aware that, and I'm just throwing out some numbers here, that the woman you met in 2011, if she's soaking up the game you're giving her, uh, she's an astute student, she's not the same woman in 2015. She's brighter, she, she's more equipped, She's smarter, she's more intelligent, and uh, she's not the same woman. So the communication has to elevate. You can't talk to her the same way. And you may not be doing it intentionally. Your spirit may be in a good place, but it's coming off as disrespectful or condescending because she's grown. She's not the same woman at 2011. She's grown, but you're still talking to her like, it's 2011. No, it's 2015, brother. You got to elevate your conversation. And if you can't elevate your conversation, if you, if she, she's meeting you where you're at, you never grown, but she's grown. So you guys are on the same level, but you're still talking to her like she's back in 2011. No, bro. She's grown. She sucked up all the game. Now she's there. Now, if you have, a, you don't have another level to go, you can't give her any more. Man, that is going to be a tricky situation to be in because she's going to come to you feeling disrespected the way you're talking to her because no man, she, she's not on baby food anymore. She's on adult food and you're still giving her baby food. So she looks at it as disrespect and you got to step your game up. You got to go to another level, tap into another level. And if you can't, she's going to seek out that she's going to seek out. That's why so many women in the church, because women, they may not want to admit this, and it's cool. Women, 
innately have a desire to be taught by men. They want the light. They want the knowledge, the gain from men. That's why so many women in church. I'm telling you, man, I've run into women who I've dated or who just were, uh, we were just platonic friends. And, you know, just in conversation, you ask, or they may just reveal why they broke up with someone. And I've heard several times women say, he couldn't teach me anything. I couldn't learn anything from him. I couldn't grow with him. So they lose interest, bro. They lose interest. Then they'll either cheat or they'll run you off or, you know, they'll make it uncomfortable where you want to run off. But it's going to be ugly. So you got to step up your game. And um, you got to take that thing to another level, man. Me, and that's in every aspect. Me, I'm the, I'm the priest of my home. I'm the priest. My woman ain't got to leave out of here to get spiritual nourishment from any man. So I'll go seek out the knowledge. I'll meditate. I'll speak to my higher self. I'll research. I'll listen to mentors. Mentors, they don't even know they're my mentors. Uh, some do know they're my mentors. Some don't. But I'll soak up all the game and I'll bring it back to the tribe. I'll bring it back home. But my woman doesn't have to go out seeking knowledge from another man. And that's emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. Um, we got to step it up, fellas. And so going back to Melinda and Bill, it could have been that situation where he, he did elevate her. And because, uh, hey, man, Bill, just, Bill Gates ain't growing on trees. So he definitely elevated her, elevated her. But possibly, just thinking objectively, possibly, she got to another level and she's ready to do certain things. And, you know, Bill has taken a step back. He's focused on, a, on the foundation, but Bill ain't involved with Microsoft like that. You know, Bill ain't involved in creating uh, on the technical side like that. So Bill, Bill's chilling, man. You know, at 38, he was already a multi-billionaire. And, hey, and like I said, that's what we should be, should, should be doing or should have done. And so... Uh, you know, so she she's she's not the same woman he got with. You know, even though he might have plateaued on a certain, she still had more to to go, and uh, you know we don't know, but you know possibly she probably felt that he was not not giving her what 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 she needed. And I read an article, and it said that Melinda possibly was tired of being in Bill's shadow. Yeah, man. So so that's not far-fetched. Uh, it happens, man. And so you got to be uh, aware of what's going on in your home, what's going on with your woman, pay attention. And just, I want to end it, but just a personal story. When I got with my wife, uh, my wife is very intelligent, man, uh, several degrees, uh, but I have a different type of intelligence. Um I could take it to the books too, but uh, business, you know, and and I know I'm pretty astute and I know how to flip a dollar. I know, I know how to make a dollar, I know how to flip a dollar. And uh, I don't know, man, I just have that energy to where uh, I know how to make something out of nothing. I don't care if it's with food, man. Uh, if I go in your house, you may tell me, man, there's not, no food here. Man, I can go in the cabinet. In your, in, your, in your cupboards, man, and, and, and just look and and just look for certain things and open your fridge. And I say, okay, and I look in your vegetable cart and I look, I'm just looking around. Okay, now I'm looking in your seasonings. And brother, I promise you, I create a gourmet meal. And you'd be like, man, it was nothing in there. I'm like, man, I didn't go to the store. This is what you had. Man, I know how to make a gourmet meal out of things you may that you may say there's nothing in there but I know how to see that the, the 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 beauty of it and the potential and so I think I get that from my positive outlook on life uh I'm an optimist um I don't think neg negatively I'm always thinking about the bright side I'm always thinking I'm going to win I'm always thinking you're going to win and so that's one of my superpowers and so uh 
And sometimes maybe I'm naive, but uh, naivety can be bliss, man, and uh, a blessing sometimes that you don't even know how bad it is. So I guess sometimes I don't even know how bad it is because I'm thinking so positive. And uh, yeah, that's just one of my superpowers. So uh, going back, you, you have to be focused and, and, and uh, know what's going on in your home. But going to a personal story, when me and my wife met, I kind of got off track there. But when my wife met, I was at a certain level. And uh, she was at a certain level. And so she embraced learning from me. And, she, and I know that about my wife, man. She, she loves to learn. She has to be able to respect the man and learn from him. If she thinks she's smarter than you, it ain't gonna work, bro. All right, you know. Uh, so that's just me, man. I'm a teacher by nature. I love teaching. I love giving it up. I love sharing. So, uh, and I'm not intimidated by my woman's growth. So I'm giving her a lot of game by entrepreneurship, by business. From a technical end, from a administrative end, uh, yeah, from a management end, a human resources end. And just giving up the game. And so she's growing and growing. But I'm not really paying attention to her growth. So a few years later, I just remember one day I'm talking to her. And she says, and you don't have to talk to me like that. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And, uh. It's like, you talking down to me. Man, I was confused. Because I, I'm telling you, man, I was dumbfounded. I had no idea what the hell she was talking about. And uh, maybe a month or two passed. We in conversation again. About something, I can't remember. And she said it again. And she started crying. And I'm like, man, what the hell is wrong with this woman? I didn't get it. So one day, man, a few weeks after that, I'm riding by myself. And I'm thinking, I was like, man, what? What the hell is going on? What am I saying? And I was like, it hit me. I was like, damn. She's not the same woman. She's not the same woman. I dated and married. She's not the same woman. And I had to revisit and look over. I said, damn, she has accomplished so much since we first met. She's accomplished things that she thought was out of the box thinking for her that was totally away from how she was raised and how she thought. She's accomplished these things. And I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it now. She think I'm talking down to her, but I'm still feeding her the same food that I was feeding her when we met and when we got married. And she's not on that food no more. It, the food is uh, not not tasteful to her. And uh, she needs a different kind of food. Hey, man, I had to step my game up. I had to step my game up, but I had another level in me already, so I had to go to that level. And I'd give us some most of different game. And then I had to educate myself even more and dive even deeper just on life, man, from an intellectual level, an emotional level, and a spiritual level. I had to dive deeper and seek out more so I could bring more back to the tribe and more back to my wife and family. And, uh, I think a lot of marriages get caught up in that where they're not paying attention. And the woman is not, and I'm not going to let her off the hook, the woman is not really articulating what's going on. Or maybe she doesn't understand really herself. But man, you got to have those alone moments, meditate, and uh, ask questions, ask yourself questions, think deeper, and it'll come to you. But you got to give it down first. So, uh, yeah, so this Bill and Melinda divorce, 
hey, it kind of shocked me, but it doesn't shock me. You know what I'm saying? They're people. At the end of the day, they're people. And no matter how much money, how much fame you have, people are people. They have insecurities. They want to grow. They have aspirations. And things happen. And sometimes we don't grow together or uh, we're not recognizing the growth in our spouse. And things happen. So, again, being objective, I don't know the reason. But their reason was they said that they didn't think they could continue growing anymore. So we got to take them at face value. Um, yeah, brothers, pay attention. Get your stuff together before you get married. All right? Focus on you. Have her eating to walk into before y'all get together. And uh, remember, man, you don't own her. Maybe it's just she's just yours for that season, man. You, you don't own her, though. But, you know, while... She is up under your wing. You know, do what you can to give her the game, protect her, lead her, guide her. But understand that, hey, man, you don't own her. Maybe just your season. All right? That's all I got for you guys, man. From me to you, it's all love. Peace.